Hello, just fan. I want to take you to a missed brilliance in a game between Magnus Carlsen and Esipenko at Tata Steel Chess Tournament. Their game ended in the row after 21 moves by repetition, but just a moment before repetition, Magnus Carlsen had a chance to convert the game and gain advantage, but it was inhuman to see it and perform it. It wasn't difficult to see it. Maybe if it was a blitz game, Magnus Carlsen was playing that move. But in a classical game, to calculate every detail takes a whole lot of time and a whole lot of imagination that you will see in this video. I will try to make it as simple as possible and explain all details as simple as possible. But if it is in a fast pace for you, don't worry. Stop the video and think about it. Arrange the board yourself and see what happens. So let's go for it. Spanko starts with d4 and since the love opening, the purpose of this video, as I said, that the start is not about the opening and mm, how well they played, but about the single move that was decisive and was not played in the game. So let's go forward and both centralize the rooks and mm, we have a rowish position at this moment. Magnus gets rid of a pin of the bishop and Zbenko makes the mistake. The mistake here is where Magnus could have created brilliancy. Plays bishop c3. The idea is to play bishop a5, attacking the rook and winning exchange. Simple, right? And Magnus just played queen c e7 to get rid of um, such attack. Zbenko Attack the rook and Magnus just repeated the position to end it in the row. But instead of this the rowish position, Magnus could have played differently. Yes, break the center by palm push to d4. Best by test. But but why this d4 is so strong? As you can see, engine says is minus 1.5, somehow winning for black. But let's see why it is winning, and it is very complicated actually. At this position, you basically, by d5, you basically somehow loosening your position, weakening your position by giving up a pawn, maybe, or opening the center for no apparent reason. And let's see what happens. So at this position, there are two possibilities for white to respond. Either to take the pawn with pawn or continue. Continue the idea that Espenko had bishop a5. Should react to this pawn push, right? Let's first consider takes the pawn. If takes the pawn, first we remove the only defender of the king or main defender of the king is that knight. Then... We open our queen line to go to h4. Also, this knight has another role at some point can jump into f4. Also, it has the third role that it attacks the bishop on c3. At this position, Spenko or white actually has two options, basically either to capture the c pawn and attack the bishop because that bishop together with the black queen will be very strong. Or just continue the idea that had as the bank was initially playing bishop a5. Should react to this um, pawn, at, uh, pawn that is uh, attacking over d4 pawn. So let's first consider the case of capturing the pawn. This is not good. What do you do? Even though two pieces of black are under attack, knight and bishop are under attack, black doesn't care, just attacks to the king directly by giving a check and the good move for white is to play bishop g4 but um, why for example white cannot play king h1 this doesn't work because first bishop and queen team up to deliver mate and for example if you capture this uh, beautiful bishop of um, black to stop the mate you will run into mate with it from different angle of course, you can go for Haragiri, but it doesn't help because after some moves, you ran out of moves and you should accept checkmates. So, taking, oops, sorry, 
taking the bishop what happened to this position at this moment after pawn push taking the bishop wasn't an option so we go back uh, going h1 and or taking the bishop was an option we go back to the position where he plays bishop g4 bishop g4 it sounds to be good but uh, at this moment uh, black just simply removes the attacker to the bishop and says that okay i have a very strong bishop uh, queen battery and i will reveal mate as um, and the open e file that prevents your king from escaping what would you do white has no active move but to just first uh, deflect the queen to be able to activate its pieces and then after all uh, at this position black is of exchange and a pawn uh, down but uh, very good position very attacking position and white's king is in danger still so it's very easy for black to play not easy win but it's very easy to play so we conclude that capturing that this pawn is not good any line was bad another direction is just to play bishop a5 bishop a5 what do you do do you again play knight d4 or what else actually first we capture that um, knight as before but um, this move is important one so instead of knight d4 this time we play knight e4 last time we couldn't play knight e4 because the pawn was on d4 attack uh, defending the sorry e5 defending the e5 square so at this moment uh, again white has several options for example capturing the pawn attacking the rook let's consider attacking the rook the most promising one at this moment for black first grabs the pawn with check and this is why knight is already there and white of course can play king g2 but let's say white doesn't play king g2 just uh, plays passively for example it plays king h1 then first we grab that bishop back uh, can you see the idea here what's this idea here no, sounds very uh, good for white right white is up a exchange and there is no attack running right bishop and queen are paired together but in the reverse direction and it takes time for black to change the direction but the point is that knight on uh, f3 is dangerous because knight and queen can play very good together for example if black white plays careless then black just moves away the bishop and the next move is a mate on h2 and basically uh, white cannot do anything much uh, against it. for example bringing the king up uh, runs into the position that we want to discuss but in a worse possible case so this is not what uh, uh, sorry this isn't what uh, white is going to play instead at this position after this check white goes to g2 directly let's say it goes to g2 directly and attacks the bishop and white still attacks the attacks the knight and attacks the queen so it's better to go to h1 and then go to g2 so black gives a check first to save the knight and if king goes up if king goes down again we face a very similar situation as before so i go to discuss about uh, king goes up to h3 and for example tries to be active and attack the knight then this is a valuable move that magnus had to be uh, able to see it at that position and it was really difficult really difficult to see there is such a beautiful done diagonal and you want to use this diagonal after all consideration like pawn takes bishop goes a5 okay but still maybe magnus was able to see this 
but it's very easy for white to close this diagonal after taking the bishop one of the attackers uh, if it uh, doesn't close the diagonal then this is uh, immediate mate right so suppose uh, actually doesn't take that bishop but instead close the diagonal by playing e4 and black says i want to open this diagonal anyway so i take your bishop and if you take i open the diagonal but if you don't take for example if you take the bishop then of course we can take back the bishop and still attack is running but instead we can also and take this pawn and say that okay i wanted to open this diagonal and i opened it white says that okay you opened it but you cannot use it because my rook defends my king here but still we have some other moves again at this position again we can capture that bishop and yes we are down exchange but we have a very very promising position and this is uh, winning for black but even better is to just kick the queen and say that I want to take the f2 pawn with the knight. And if queen tries to stay here, stay here we again and try to cut off the queen and to take the f2 pawn and bring the queen to the attack because queen can jump into f3. And say, uh, if says that I want to defend this with all forces, bring the queen from different angle. The queen wants to land in h4 and deliver some homemade if you say that no i will defend that h4 is pot it doesn't help because first knight gives a check and you don't have any much much places to run in for example if you go down if you go up you can calculate it yourself it's not much different first um, diagonal check and then if you, know, you try to defend this diagonal check with palm push it doesn't help because first rook comes to the attack finally and you cannot save this game because this is a basically mate at the back rank so yes there is no way to defend the game and every direction uh, was bad the only move uh, to be considered the last move that we didn't consider is for queen e2 this is actually the best move uh, right now we understand this diagonal is very important we shouldn't allow knight to land in f3 easily and we should defend it with all by all means so if um, black continues attacking and if we go greedy uh, and we forget that this f3 score is very important again we run to the same issue after uh, similar issues actually after capturing back the bishop first gives a check and if we try to run away with the king it doesn't help because it's basically mate what would you do playing rook there and then goodbye party you cannot play queen f1 because uh, just takes so what else can you do instead of king to e1 you can go king g1 again but this again doesn't help because uh, we continue our attack to the king of the white and no is uh, this king is defenseless right now again we're threatening playing queen h1 and if you play queen f2 to say that okay i wouldn't defend your against your check with uh, queen g1 we try to attack your queen and uh, this attract it after this reaction uh, here of course we can play queen h1 but um, place queen g1 and defense first we grab that bishop and attack the queen okay this bishop was very important was very good defensive resource no we can activate the second knight to the game and bring the knight into the game now consider that here white cannot capture the f5 knight because then knight uh eatery is a fork of queen so what should move the queen away but uh, two knights are just too strong too and very good uh, work together very good and they win a complete rook and there is no way to survive this game a rook down so in this position after 
uh, queen comes in play you cannot ignore the threat of uh, uh, knight takes f3 so you should defend that f3 pawn but then at this position magnus can simply or black could have simply escaped from that uh, exchange and sacrifice and black has a very very nice position and uh, attack is running and it's a clean advantage for black here there is no exchange sacrifice nothing but and all pieces of black are, uh, are well coordinated and the king of white is very weak and of course the, this is a game but a uh, much um, better position for black and it's much better than the final outcome of this game which was a draw i hope you enjoyed see you next time bye